recently I saw a documentary that was talking about, had several doctors on there talking about how red meat causes diabetes. Mm. So aren't you aren't you concerned about <laughs> getting type 2 diabetes from all the meat you're consuming? Yeah. No, no, because I actually understand biochemistry. <laughs> um, you know, and so I mean, I mean, that's the the, the funny thing. You know, when when people um, re- just remove carbohydrates, I mean, we have this in, in clinical human large human clinical trials showing that if you remove carbohydrates, that diabetes goes away. Type two diabetes mm-hmm. goes away, and type one diabetes is, is is much more easily controlled, and you just use a, a minimal amount of insulin. Um, one of the arguments that they say. Uh, like a ketogenic diet in general or carnivore diet, which is generally a ketogenic diet should be, is that you know how that can cause insulin resistance. This is this is a, a sleight of hand uh, because they're saying that, well, when you have someone who's on a ketogenic diet, after a few months, you give them a glucose tolerance test and that and it has this big high response, which was a high number. So that means that they have high insulin or, or, or insulin resistance, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. It just means that their glucose went up. That doesn't mean they have insulin resistance because what was their insulin level? What was their fasting insulin level? And what was their insulin level directly after that test? The insulin level will actually be very low, very low, because the, when you're eating a lot of carbohydrates and you're chronically eating carbohydrates, this is bad for your body. This causes harm. High blood sugar causes harm to your body. So your, your body has to protect itself from itself, from you. And it preloads insulin in your pancreas. And so it's there ready-made because it's expecting this, this toxic level of insult uh, to happen at any time. And so it has to be ready to respond right away or else you're going to be harmed. And the body's very, very good at protecting you. And so you actually pre-make insulin. It's there ready for you. You eat carbohydrates and bang, it knocks it out. Now that eventually will start to subside in that that response, that physiological response, and you maybe won't be able to to take care of it because of insulin resistance, or because you're not able to make enough insulin uh, at, at a certain point when you've burnt your pancreas out. But when you stop eating carbohydrates, your body doesn't need to pre-make insulin. It's just making this very low grade amount of insulin all the time because you're making carbohydrates, but you're making the right amount of carbohydrates naturally through gluconeogenesis, which is demand driven right? So your body needs a certain amount of carbs. So it makes a certain amount of carbs and it has a very low level of insulin uh, necessary to, to uh, utilize that. So if you're not pre-making the insulin, what happens when you eat a lot of carbs? Well, your blood sugar level goes up and you don't have this pre-made insulin to knock it down really very quickly. So the response is delayed, but it happens. It does come down after, after that. And so what people take that to me is that, well, there, that's insulin resistance then. No, that's not what that means. That's not what that test shows. All that test shows is that your blood sugar went up. That's it. And then you're inferring the reason why after that. But there are other reasons why that blood sugar can be up and that's it. And so after a few days, if you continue to eat carbohydrates, your body will just start pre-making insulin again. And then it will release that out. And you'll actually find that people have less insulin resistance, they have a better response on the glucose tolerance test after a few days when their body starts pre-making insulin. Um, you know, the, this simple fact that you can reverse type two diabetes by removing carbohydrates, but not by removing meat should tell you everything you need to know about that statement of theirs. Also insulin resistance, what is insulin resistance, right? It's, you know, you, you have chronically high insulin and, you know, your body just in you know, a chronically high blood sugar and your body just starts dampening down the response to insulin because you're getting this overload. Just like if you do any sort of drug and you have too much of this chemical in your body, your body builds up a tolerance to it, starts reducing the amount of receptors available because it's just getting too much signal. And Mm -hmm. so it doesn't want that much signal. And so, you know, you start, you start getting more resistance. Um, Fat does not drive insulin, right? So it's not insulinogenic. So it's not going to cause an insulin response. It's not going to cause you to create more insulin and protein, very low insulin response, even on the, on the, um, uh, you know, the, the, in in a normal setting, when you're, you're eating carbohydrates, you'll have a, a slightly higher response with the protein. But if you're not eating carbohydrates at all, it's a very, very small, uh, 
bump in your in your blood sugar levels, which will make a very small response with your your insulin levels. So the idea that you can get insulin resistance from from eating in a way that doesn't really affect your insulin by and large is, is a bit funny. You know, I mean, you, I guess you could say something about the um, the Randall cycle where you know, when fat and and, and uh, carbohydrates go into a cell, it'll sort of lock it down and you'll sort of get resistance at that point because the cells is like, hey, we have too much energy. We don't want to overload ourselves. So we sort of block it out. Uh, and so if you're eating fat, then it blocks out the carbs and you're eating carbs, it blocks out the fat and all that sort of stuff. Well, simple solution, don't eat carbs again, and you won't have that problem. <laughs> 